Hello and congratulations on the purchase of your Powerhall 3 air intake emergency shutoff valve by Packbrake. My name is Paul and today I will be guiding you through the installation of your new system. Let us begin by going over some of the components included in your kit. First we have the shutoff valve itself and the necessary hardware for mounting the shutoff valve including silicone hoses and mounting clamps, the magnetic pickup sensor for detecting speed, the membrane switch for controlling the system itself, the power guard controller for controlling the automatic function, and lastly, the wiring harness for connecting all of your components. Once you have confirmed that you have all of the components laid out here, you can begin your installation. The first step in installing your system is to choose where the valve itself will be installed. Today we are installing on an older Kenworth truck with a Caterpillar C15 engine, but the general guidelines apply to all trucks and engines. The valve can be installed anywhere along the intake plumbing as long as it is not exposed to turbulent flow conditions which exist immediately after elbows and bends in piping or at the outlet of the turbocharger. Laminar flow conditions will result in optimal performance for the valve. Packbrake actually recommends that you install here immediately post intercooler. Once you have chosen your desired location, it is time to remove your section of piping and trim it to accommodate the valve. If you are installing within a section of silicone hose, remove one and a quarter inch of silicone hose and if you're installing within a section of steel pipe, remove three and three quarter inches. In our case, we were able to install in place of the factory hump hose and cutting was not necessary. Now that we have removed the appropriate section from our intake plumbing, it is time to install our valve as we have already done here. Before installation, clear the intake plumbing of any debris to protect your engine. If you're installing within steel pipe as we did, roll a bead onto the end of your pipe to ensure that the silicone hose is retained. If you do not have access to a bead roller, Packbrake offers a weld-in-place bead ring kit. Having done this, we can confirm that our valve has been installed correctly. The electrical connector on the valve motor should point in the direction of airflow as shown here towards the intake manifold. The clock position of the valve can be altered slightly to ensure that we have clearance from all components that could potentially interfere. The silicone hoses should be completely seated onto the valve and there should be no gaps between the hose and the cast aluminum surface. All clamps should be torqued to 75 inch pounds. The next step in the installation is to install the speed sensor. As previously mentioned, we will be installing a magnetic pickup sensor. The sensor threads into a port in the engine bell housing. In most cases, the port already exists, but if the port does not exist, we can drill and tap a port of our own. In our case, the port does exist. Once we have located our existing port, we can remove the plug and must confirm that the port is centered over the flywheel teeth. If your flywheel teeth are offset, Packbrake offers an offset adapter kit. Having confirmed that our sensor port will work, we can thread the sensor in all the way until it makes contact with the flywheel teeth. Once it makes contact, back the sensor out one half a turn to ensure that the sensor does not get damaged during engine operation. Having done this, we can tighten down the nut and torque it to 60 foot pounds. Once the speed sensor has been installed, we can move into the vehicle cab where we will install the membrane switch used to control the power halt system. It is recommended that you install the switch in a location accessible from the ground outside of the driver's side door. This location on the lower left side of the dash panel is a good location to install the switch as flashing lights will not irritate the driver from here. Use the provided drilling template to drill the three holes and torque the nuts to 20 inch pounds. Having installed the membrane switch, we can now install the power guard controller. To protect the controller from high temperatures and potential water ingress due to pressure washing and steam cleaning of your engine, mount the controller within the vehicle cab. Do not mount it anywhere in the engine bay. In most cases, the controller is mounted behind the vehicle dash after removing dash panels. Secure the controller in place using the provided tie straps or self-tapping screws. The final step in the installation is to neatly route and connect the wiring harness to all of the components that we just installed. Ensure that the harness is tie strapped away from any sources of high heat or any moving components. Also ensure that the harness is not twisted or bent at any harsh angles as engine vibration could cause damage under these circumstances. When making a connection, ensure that the harness connection is securely latched before moving on to the next connection. Also ensure that slack is given. Use the knockouts in the firewall to pass the harness through or drill and seal holes of your own. Do not remove pins from the connectors in order to pass through small holes. The PH3 system is able to force shutdown at a secondary set point. If your vehicle is equipped with a PTO or power takeoff capability, you may want to take advantage of this feature. 
To activate the secondary set point, you must connect the purple lead wire from the wiring harness to ground using your PTO activation switch. Ensure that the system is provided a good, clean connection to a sufficient power source. Voltage drops due to corrosion can result in error codes being triggered. We recommend drawing power directly from the batteries. And with that, congratulations. You have successfully installed your PH3 system. Please take the time now to review the operator's guide provided with your kit and familiarize yourself with the function of the shutoff valve. Take this and all other documents and provide them to the driver once you are done. It is now time to program the system. Refer to our programming video for more information. Thank you for watching.